Good evening and welcome to the Bison Information Network. I'm Z Stockwell. And I'm Lydia Lafine. We have the latest campus and local news coming up this evening, so you don't want to go away. We've survived the majority of the year and made it to Zed Week. With many students stressing about finals and the end of the semester, the library has extended hours to encourage studying. NDSU's library is currently open 24 hours and will continue to be until May 12th at 5 p.m. Currently, after 8 p.m., the building is only accessible with the NDSU ID card. Take advantage of the extended time along with free snacks and activities such as puzzles, which are distributed throughout the library. Good luck with finals. The seventh annual juried undergrad ex exhibition will take place next Wednesday. The exhibit will display original works by NDSU students which have been chosen through a meticulous judging process. Only 60 pieces were accepted out of the hundreds of submitted art pieces. Go support NDSU's art program and enjoy beautiful artwork on May 10th from 5 to 7 in the Union Gallery. Tomorrow, the back... Baccalaureate Reception will be making its final return this semester to the Memorial Union Gallery from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Every semester, the Baccalaureate Visual Arts seniors are tasked to develop a cohesive, conceptually concise body of work. Each work of art examines a complex theme, researched and interpreted into a medium reflecting their personal visions. All are invited to stop by the reception to have a conversation with the artists about their pieces and experiences. Next Monday, West Dining Centers will be hosting a late night breakfast event from 9 p.m. until 11 p.m. Take a study break and fuel your finals with this free event. All students living in residence halls have free entry, even if you don't have a meal plan. The menu will feature French toast, banana bread, waffles, and more. A couple of reminders before the event that if you have a block plan, a swipe will not be used, and the MLLC and Niskanen halls are also residence halls, which means you will get in for free. NDSU apartments and off-campus students may attend with a friend's guest pass or by paying $5 at the door. No registration is required. Today is Star Wars Day, and the campus is honoring this informal holiday. Today, the Student Activities Office hosted a May the 4th celebration. This included galaxy-flavored drinks, popcorn, and a continuous showing of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Tonight, you'll likely stumble upon some lightsaber fights if you wander about campus. NDSU architecture students recently presented their vision for a reinvigorated downtown Minot. A potential future for downtown Minot was unveiled this week as fourth year architecture students from NDSU, under the instruction of Christy Hansen, shared the results of a semester long project. The project features 16 students' ideas for ways to reinvigorate downtown Minot from refreshed facades and green spaces to potential uses for the recently vacated Trinity Hospital building and Minot's two downtown parking structures. Each design concept was brought to life in a video presentation featuring detailed artistic renderings of the designs. The students also discussed their individual projects with attendees during a social following the presentation. I thank Christy for leading NDSU to fulfill its land grant values, said Kevin Black, chair of the Minot Area Chamber EDC Board of Directors and a member of the North Dakota Board of Higher Education. He continued saying, NDSU has a special mission to serve the entire state of North Dakota and this project accomplishes that mission in a remarkable way. When we come back, we'll take a look at some local and national news. Stay tuned. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment, it's like actually doing it. 
I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The Bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top of the line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your Bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. The Red River Valley SWAT team is conducting training in Fargo tonight. Authorities say you may see SWAT members carrying guns around the outside of buildings at that time. No live rounds will be used. You can also expect to hear loud noises and yelling from the area during training. The SWAT team will be training in the 500 block of 4th Street South today from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. If you are concerned about the training or think a real crime may be happening, you can call dispatch at 701-451-7660. Are you a fan of camping, hiking, or climbing? Maybe even just hammocking? If so, on May 13th, go to Harold's in Moorhead for a used gear sale. Beginning at 10 a.m., the event will host beginner workshops for bike tuning, tent camping, and what layers and gear a beginner should carry with them. Food trucks, coffee, and even a bar will be there, though all transactions must be made in cash. The event ends at 4 p.m. A spring vintage market is also occurring over the weekend. Live music, food trucks, kombucha or alcoholic beverages, vintage clothes and vinyls will be present, along with a multitude of other groovy items to brighten your day. The event is free to the public and will take place outside of Wild Terra Cider. The market will run from noon to 6 p.m. this Sunday. If you're searching for a way to escape reality and fly away to Neverland, you're in luck. This weekend, the FM Ballet is presenting a storybook dance production of Peter Pan. This show will transport you to unthinkable heights with flying dancers, beauty, beautifully choreographed ballet, and the magic of some faith, trust, and some pixie dust. Performances will be held at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Saturday, May 6th, and a final performance occurs at 2 p.m. on Sunday, May 7th. The show will be held in the Fargo Theater. On April 15th, Sudan, a country in northeastern Africa, erupted into a civil war after rival generals from the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces had a conflict. Only a week ago, a convoy of hundreds of Americans arrived in an eastern port city to provide the first ever U.S.-led evacuation effort for other United States citizens. Over 16,000 Americans had been documented living in Sudan before the convoy's departures. So far, the conflict has killed more than 500 people and injured more than 4,000 others. Last Sunday, the United Nations spokesperson Stefan Deserik released a statement expressing concern for the immediate well-being of not only the citizens of Sudan, but those of the entire region. The U.S. has released a warning to Americans not to travel to Sudan. Long story short, only the young lovers of Miss Americana, Taylor Swift, have to ask their teachers a question. Why did you decide to speak now? This is me trying to say some teachers had to be the anti-hero, saying call it what you want, but absences won't be excused because you stayed up until midnight. They said you're on your own, kids. No illicit affairs of skipping school to see Miss Swift. After seeing the bolded words in this message, not in a bottle, that was the moment I knew that this Swifty superintendent was going to handle this delicate situation with Easter eggs like a mastermind, hoping not to ruin their reputation and avoid a labyrinth of bad blood with students and parents they said, don't blame me. With only two days until the cruel summer, you need to calm down. Families are deciding whether or not to tolerate it. After many tears ricocheted, many decided to shake it off, saying, tonight's the night we forget about the deadlines. It's time for my wildest dreams to come true. Instead of stay, stay, staying at a treacherous school day they know all too well, students are choosing happiness. They're going to have the best day at this gorgeous concert. I'm sure they'll be enchanted in Taylor Wonderland. When we come back, Dash Menzel will have your Bison Sports Report for the week. Don't go away. 
My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Check. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. This past weekend, the baseball and softball teams were finally able to play their first home series of the season. And as for the baseball team, and as for the baseball team, they showed their dominance this past week against Western Illinois. And how dominant were they? I wouldn't say they were too dominant. They only won all three of their games by 10 runs or more. After a scoreless first two innings, the Bison went off in the third inning, scoring five runs. The inning was capped off on the three RBI double by Terrell Huggins. The Bison would have an encore presentation in the eighth inning, as they scored five more runs to end the game in eight innings, with a final score of 10 to nothing. James Dunlap had two runs, four hits, and three RBIs. Terrell Huggins had two hits and three RBIs. Drew Sackett had two runs, one hit, and two RBIs. And Caden Schwabe had two runs, two hits, and an RBI. Saturday's game would be more of the same for the Bison, and the Bison bats remained hot as they scored 10 runs in the first three innings. Jack Style, Drew Sackett, and Peter Brookshaw also all hit home runs in this game. While Western Illinois would try to keep the game going, they couldn't do quite enough in the seventh inning to continue the game, and the Bison would go on to win it 13-3 in seven innings. Drew Sackett had three runs, three hits, and four RBIs. James Dunlap had one run, two hits, and three RBIs. Peter Peter Brookshaw had three runs, three hits, and two RBIs, and Caden Schwabe had three runs, two hits, and an RBI. In Sunday's game, the Bison would somehow improve on their first two performances from the first two games on Saturday. It was looking to be a closer game than the first two after the top of the fourth because the Bison only had a 2-1 to one lead. However, the Bison turned on the fireworks for the next three innings. They scored four runs in the fourth, nine runs in the fifth inning, and six runs in the sixth inning. The Bison had 16 hits on the day as they would cruise to a 21-3 victory to sweep the series. 21-3, it almost sounds like a football score. As for the player graphics, James Dunlap had three runs, three hits, and five RBIs. Caden Schwabe had two runs, two hits, and four RBIs. Jack Style had two runs, three hits, and four RBIs. And Drew Sackett had three runs, two hits, and three RBIs. Last night, the team traveled to Lincoln, Nebraska to play the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And the Bison started off great once again. Drew Sackett hit a three-run home run to begin a 6 to nothing lead by the end of the third inning. And also, the Bison scored five runs in the first inning for the third straight game. However, Nebraska would try to mount a comeback with four runs of their own. NDSU would escape, though, with a narrow victory of 6-5, to five, even after Nebraska got four home runs. Drew Sackett had one run, one hit, and three RBIs. Caden Schwabe had one run and two hits. And Jack Style had two runs and one hit. 
The Bison are now 16 and 26 on the season. They will travel to Greeley, Colorado to play the Northern Colorado Bears. The first game will start tomorrow at 3 p.m. The softball team played their first home series as well this past weekend against UND. They started off the series strong by scoring eight runs in the first three innings of play. Bella Dean got the scoring started with a three-run home run in the first inning of Game 1. And it would only get better as Skyler Padgett hit an RBI single and Emily Baringa hit an RBI double in the second inning. The eight-run start would be enough to hang on for an 8-5 to five victory. Bella Dean had one run, one hit, and three RBIs. Emily Baringa had two runs, three hits, and two RBIs. And Carly Gotchis had one run, one hit, and an RBI. Game two, unlike game one, it would be a little bit more of a low scoring one. The Bison would score right away off of an RBI single from Bella Dean. However, UND would respond in the third inning and the game would be tied one to one heading into the fifth inning. Chloe Woldruff would hit an RBI double in the fifth to retake the lead for the Bison, and in the sixth inning, the Bison would get two more runs to secure a hard-fought 4-2 win. Belladine had one run, two hits, and two RBIs. Chloe Woldruff had one hit and one RBI. The Bison would try to complete the series sweep on Sunday. Unfortunately, it was not meant to be. The game was notched at 1-1 until the sixth inning when UND hit an RBI single and a two RBI double to take a 4-1 lead. But the Bison wouldn't give up so easily though. They would answer back with a two RBI single at the bottom of the inning off of Carly Gotchis to bring the game back within one. But however, the comeback fell just short as a potential walk-off hit into right field by Belladine was barely caught by UND's right fielder Mariah Peters. The Bison would see their five game win streak come to an end in a 4-3 loss. Carly Gotchis had one hit and two RBIs, and Emily Baringa had one hit run, two hits, and an RBI. The softball team will play their final regular season series this weekend, and there is a lot of stakes on the line on this one. They will play against Omaha for the rest of the second seed in the Summer League Tournament. The first game starts at noon tomorrow. The Bison track and field teams traveled to Des Moines and Indianola, Iowa for the Drake Relays and the Kip Janvrin Open, and they also went to Moorhead, Minnesota for the Ron Mazans Classic. As for the men, Jacob Van Dusseldorf won the collegiate pole vault, clearing an outdoor personal best of just over 5 meters. Jake Arison won the 3,000 meter steeplechase in a time of 9 minutes and 1 second, and Josh Knudsen won the 400 meter hurdles in a time of 52.71 seconds. As for the women, Teresa Bullerbrook won the 100 meter hurdles in a personal best time of 13.47 seconds, Kendra Kelly won the 200 meter dash in a time of 23.51 seconds, Nell Graham won the 400 meter hurdles in a personal best time of 1 minute right on the nose, and freshman Julia Garardi won the pole vault clearing 3.8 meters. The track and field teams will get to return to Fargo this weekend as they compete in the NDSU tune-up. Competitions start at noon tomorrow. And the NDSU men's golf team wrapped up their season at the Summit League Championships on Tuesday at the Wilderness Ridge Country Club in Lincoln, Nebraska. The team finished fourth out of 10 teams. Nate Adams and Nate Diesel both led the Bison with scores of 11 over par, finishing tied for ninth overall. And Ian Simonich had an impressive final day, which allowed him to climb the leaderboards and finish tied for 12th with a score of 12 over par. The team finished the year with three team victories and seven top three finishes. So congratulations on a great season for the men's golf team. Well, that is all for Bison Sports. Now on to Koi with the weather. Koi, you know, the weather is finally starting to warm up. It's looking like spring and maybe even summer here in Fargo, North Dakota for finally. Oh yeah, we finally had our first 70 degree day just this past week and we have more of that to look forward to into the week ahead. Taking a look at our current conditions right now, starting with what's coming to us from the Hector International Airport. We are currently seeing mostly cloudy skies with a temperature of 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are out of the northwest at 16 miles per hour with gusts up to 22 currently. Taking a look at what's going on for the rest of the night, temperatures will drop off as we go into early tomorrow morning with a high of 44 at 6 a.m. tomorrow. And we will see some clouds throughout the sky, but it will be, we will still see some clear skies as the night continues to go on. Taking a look at the skycast this morning, the sun rose at 6.07 a.m. Sun will set this evening, 8.41 p.m., gives about 14 and a half hours of daylight there. And then we are currently in the waxing gibbous phase with a, with a full moon coming up tomorrow. So we do have that to look forward to as well. Taking a look at today's almanac, today's high was 71 with a low of 43. Pretty close to what we're used to seeing for this time of year with an average high of 64 and a low of 39. However, the record high was set back in 1926 at 93 degrees and a low of 22 back in 1967. 
Taking a look at what's going on across the country, as you can see, the temperatures that we are seeing in the Fargo, Fargo Marquette area there are pretty similar to what we're seeing across much of the country. Not a whole lot of variation there. Are seeing temperatures in the 70s and 60s there. However, it's once you get up into the north northeast part of the country that temperatures do start to drop off a bit. So we actually don't have the coldest temperatures in the United States for once. So that, that's always good to see. Taking a look at the next 48 hours for the rain and snow. Again, same thing here, a little bit happening in the Fargo-Moorhead area. And as you get to the southern part of the, of the state, that's where we're still seeing some of that snow. And as you get down to the South Dakota, can or not in the South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota area there. And then as you get into the other, as you get into the other side of the country as well. Taking a look at the next seven days, kicking it off with the, going into the weekend. Tomorrow, Cinco de Mayo has a high of 66 with a low of 43. We'll see mostly cloud, mostly clear skies there, excuse me. And then as we get into the weekend, we will start to see some rainfall that we can expect as the weekend goes on, and that will continue into Monday. And then Monday has a high of 71 with a low of 49. And then as the week goes on, similar temperatures for Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll get a little more sunshine back with some partly cloudy skies there with a high of 70 for both of those days. And then the high will drop down just a tad to a high of 69 on Thursday and then that's when we can also expect a little bit more rainfall there. Taking a look at what's going on for the national days that, we could, that we're seeing today, it is National Star Wars Day today, so may the 4th be with you watching if you're a Star Wars fan, and also International Respect for Chickens Day, so if you have any chickens, be sure to show them some respect today. Well, that's all I have for weather and for the holidays for this week. Back to you at the Desk Dash. You know, it's good to see that weather getting better for graduation, which is next Saturday. As you know, me and you are both graduating, and you know, the two of us combined have had seven years here at Ben. It has just been a wonderful experience for both of us. We have gone to Sioux Falls. We've gone to Frisco, Texas. It has just been an incredible journey at our time here at Ben. Oh yeah, I've definitely enjoyed it and I'm really excited to see what's next for both of us in the future. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for watching. We hope you have a great summer.